Hello and welcome to Believe. My name is Nicholas Upchurch. Thank you so much for being with us. I'm excited that you're here. We want to help you to find your truth. I want to help you to find your truth and help you to succeed in any way we can. We do that on Believe in five categories, money and business, true success, health and wellness, world news, and our universe. And wow, we had a really big video. It got up to over 100,000 views. And, and there are a lot of positive comments and a lot of people, of course, complaining. And I totally understand. Actually, I love that. And uh, that was about one of the hurricanes and harp. And, you know, I just think it's so important for us to ask questions. There's so much going on in the world. There's so much we're not aware of. And also there could be some things being hidden, maybe maybe on purpose. And if people are hiding those things, we'd like to forgive them. We'd like to maybe invite them and show them, hey, there's another way. Maybe there's alternate ways to, to go about things. And I think first becoming aware of what's possible is so important. No matter if you want to open a business, of course, we've had billionaire Jim Rogers on and we've had business leaders and CEOs and we've had uh, health and wellness experts. No matter if you want to get in great shape, you want to build a great business or you just want to find out, hey, why the hell am I on earth or what we think is earth, right? Why am I even here and what is really going on? What's my true purpose or, or what is our true purpose? And so I think it's so important, but one of the most important things for us to look into things that we can't really explain. And we're going to do that on this episode. And the reason why is because as you do that, your awareness increases, all of our awareness increases, and the possibilities allow you to see different opportunities to improve ourselves, to harmonize, in terms of the tough things inside of ourself. Uh, I know I've had to do that a lot so that we can actually move forward. And we have a really cool guest in this episode uh, who's going to address a lot of things. He's written a book and I'm going to actually introduce you to him in a second, but I'd like to really get into some questions. You know, I had some questions and you'll see Mark on the screen now, but I was thinking about this. I never thought I would do this, this episode uh, Mark Sargent, he's written a book called Flat Earth Clues, The Sky's the Limit. Mark, how are you, sir? I am well. How are you? Good. Thank you. So, Mark, I never I never thought I'd do this episode. And I'm sure you've heard this before because, you know, you're really an amazing guy. And the reason why is because you're willing to look into things on a deep level and look into things that people would say, hey, you're crazy. You're crazy. You're crazy. You know what, the thing about that, and I have some things I want to go through, and then I'll, I'll, I'll kind of jump in here with Mark, but the CIA, there are documents that are declassified that said, hey, we're going to hire Disney and, and make aliens, make that whole topic sound crazy. And so when people talk about aliens and UFOs, everybody's going to laugh. So we're going to, and I love Disney, by the way, but we're going to hire Disney and we're going to make up some, you know, little green men, and that way... Anytime anybody talks about UFOs or aliens, it's going to be a joke. And then anytime a scientist does or anything else, it's going to be a joke. It's going to be a joke. Well, that's kind of interesting, right? And so Mark has written a book called Flat Earth Clues, The Sky's the Limit. And so this came into my awareness, and I don't know what the hell's going on. But that's the point. I don't know what the hell's going on. And, and if anybody's been to space, feel free to chime in. But anybody else that just wants to bitch and say, I know everything and this is crazy, why are you even talking about it? Unless you've been to space, I don't want to hear about it. Or unless you've flown over the North Pole and the South Pole and done a circle around, I don't want to hear about it. Because I don't really know. And the problem is that the government, you, you don't really know what they know. And they're not going to tell you what they know. And so you have to ask these questions. This would be really easy. And I, I did a joke like eight, nine months ago that there's still a flat earth society. There's still a flat earth society out there. You know, ah, it's, you know, some people will join the flat earth society. Like, cause, cause I grew up with that being a joke. I grew up with the flat earth society being a joke. So I just, you know, then Shaq, Shaq came out, you know, Shaquille O'Neal, the basketball player. 
he came out in some kind of tweet or something uh, probably about nine months ago. Mark probably heard about this saying, hey, uh, the earth is flat. And we had this rapper from Outcast, I think. Uh, I think his name is Big Boy or some Andre 3000. Somebody came out on a tweet as well a few years ago saying, hey, why is the horizon not dropping? So I start to look into this, and I only looked into it a little bit because I, I look into things a lot. But I start, hey, I started to look into this. I'm thinking, why are there no real – I find out there's no real images of Earth. And, I'm, and NASA's been giving us images that are like, composites like pieced together and then i'm like i'm looking at this more i'm like why are there no flights like actually if you look at mark's book and mark i'd love you to tell us about this but why are there no flights that that go well first of all over the poles both of them i mean that'd be a long flight but but also like there's something about the southern hemisphere there's no direct flights they they make you connect all the time and that's weird and then this and then why can't we go to Antarctica? Like, what's going on with that? There's some kind of military uh, treaty, and you know, basically, like, if people go there, sometimes they disappeared. Some California guy went there trying to make a documentary. They disappeared. I guess you know. I don't know if he was killed. Maybe he maybe he fell through the ice. I don't really know. But why is Antarctica weird? Why are they making it weird? Why, what's going on there? Why wouldn't they mine it for, why wouldn't they use it for oil set up? I mean, everywhere else. And of course they say it's frozen. And so there's so many things that are strange. So Mark, I have to, I have to understand what is going on out there? Is the <laughs> earth flat? Yeah. Yeah, it is flat. <laughs> it's very flat. And to, to preface that though, I must say that, look, secrets can be kept things can be hidden don't don't think for a second that the powers that be can't keep things from you happens all the time uh, a perfect example would be the, the just a small example would be the spy planes of the united states military which is until we had a spy plane get shot down over russia in the 1960s there were no spy planes we never admitted to them they didn't exist uh, Area 51, until we had people climbing up on mountaintops next to it and taking pictures of it, categor categorically did not exist. In fact, they, they, they won't even admit to it even today. They just bought up most of the property around those mountains, so you can't take movies anymore if you can help it. But, I mean, the camera technology has been ramped up since then. But, yes, things are, the, one of my favorite quotes is, things are rarely what they first appear to be. And so if I went to you, and I know anyone listening to this is going to say, this guy is nuts, right? If I went to you and I said, look, uh, things are rarely what they appear to be. So how do you know you're on a globe right now? How do you know? Eventually, you're going to say something like, well, the space agencies, you know what? You just, you're going to lean on one of those, NASA or the Europeans, the Japanese, the Chinese or Indian or whatever. I'm going, okay, that's, that's fine. That's, that's exactly what you should be doing but they've only been around for 50 years so how did you know before nasa how did you because some of your listeners i'm sure are old enough how how did you know before nasa that you lived on a globe and then the wheels start turning you know people start thinking well you know ships going over the horizon or crescent moon or blood moon or or stars spinning in the sky i'm going that's fantastic that that's great but what does that tell you is that you know you were told that you lived on a globe before NASA. You didn't know uh, on your own, you were told this. So how do you know? And, and again, pre uh, before I really get into it, don't believe anything I'm telling you here, right? Don't take anything I say at face value. Do your own research and ask questions because that's what you're gonna have a lot of. But the understanding the, the core of the flat earth is easy but you will have a ton of follow-up questions saying, well, okay, if it's flat, how does this work? If it's flat, how does this system function? And it, it goes on and on and on. And slowly but surely, you will start on a journey, which if you get to the other side, you'll never look at things the same way again. Well, you're right. In terms of Area 51, Clinton, I saw a press conference while he was still president. Mm -hmm. While he was still present, not after, and people can find this on YouTube. Somebody asked him about Area 51, mm -hmm. and he said, there's a government within the government that I don't control. I can't answer that. And 
Yeah. It's just straight and up. Pre- people, people think that presidents, uh, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, the, the most powerful man in the free world. I think, no, 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 no. No, that goes against all the rules of power, especially the first rule. The first rule of power, which everybody should memorize, and that this explains a lot, is stay hidden. That, that's the abbreviated version. The longer version of it is never put yourself in a position where you can be overthrown. That is, it is the blessing and the curse of, of true power in that if you have a 12-digit bank account and you own kings and presidents and all, all these people... You don't ever want to put yourself in a place where the townsfolk with pitchforks and torches can come after you. So you have to stay in the shadows. You have to stay hidden. Let anyone else. It's like kings can be, people can be overthrown. If you live in a palace, they know where you are. You're a target. If you're a president, you can be voted out of office or impeached or whatever it is. So don't think for a second that presidents have, I mean, they are so far down in the food chain. They're, They're just a frontman. That's all they are. They're they're the lead singer in a band. You know, they're not the producers or the people that are backing the band. They're just the people in front of the microphone. I agree. I we agree on so much. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if the earth is flat, but that's the thing. I don't know. Well, now you know, but it's but yeah. I, I like talking about it because I don't know. I mean, it, and it's hard for us to let go of things, but the government could solve this so easily if they wanted to. Sure. They could fly. They they could fly people around both poles in a circle and and navigate in a proper way or or do something which could once and for all determine it. Um, but let me just ask you, Mark, because yeah, yeah. I know people have asked you so many cool things. Mm-hmm. If okay, if the world is flat, right. and to you to you it is, and that that's okay with mm-hmm. me. Um, what are we doing here? That's an excellent question. I mean, you're you're cutting you're cutting to the 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 end part of the book, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> which is why why we're, if if it is flat, then why are we here? I mean, you could ask the same if we were on a globe. To be honest, you're right. You know what is our purpose? But a flat world m- fits into that question a lot better because if it is flat and not and not just flat enclosed meaning there's some sort of dome like structure over the top of this thing keeping us in or you know is are we being kept in here to protect us from what's outside or are we being kept in here because they don't want us running amok are we a box of kittens or are we a box of scorpions that should never be let loose in a million years uh, and our science fiction movies have talked about that forever, you know, going all the way back to uh, the original The Day the Earth Stood Still, where another race came in and said, yeah, you guys aren't ever going to leave this place because <laughs> you're far too <laughs> savage. But for as far as why we are here, I, I don't know if you can jump to that quickly, but let me let me try to kind of ease you in. Sure. Whereas, look, if if the world is like a Truman show and the short version is the all the world's a stage. Let, let's or make West it easy. World? Right? I'm sorry, like what? Westworld? Kind of like Westworld. Yeah, there you go. All, if all the world's a stage, then you're on it, right? And if you're on it, why are you on it? Well, there's several different ways you could go there. And that is, is this part entertainment? Is it part education system? Is it part confinement? It can only be a combination of those three things, education, entertainment, and confinement. But for me, it feels like school, like some sort of perspective uh, lesson where you're here and the world is, and, and you can, you can look at this if, if you're old enough to remember the Joe Walsh song, uh, life's been good, where he talks about the life of a rock star and how it's always conflicted, no matter how much money you have, how beautiful you are, how talented you are, uh, any of these things, you always have something to complain about always. This world is perfectly conflicted. You know, the world without us, I steal a line from the matrix, the world without us is balanced perfectly. You know, all the other life forms, do, you know, develop an actual natural equilibrium and every, everything works fine. You introduce us into it, it just turns into chaos. So I think we're here to remind us of what's outside of here, which is an unlimited universe with unlimited potential. And no, time isn't a factor. You know, look at how we live our lives here. We have, what, 70 years, roughly, that's the lifespan. That's nothing in the grand scheme of things. And no matter what we do, there's a, we seem to define our lives through misery and suffering. So if that is literally 100% of the rule that, you know, that everybody falls into, 
then I think, you know, you can't appreciate something without the opposite of it. You can't appreciate light without shadow, hot without cold. So I, that's why I think we're here to, to learn, to remember what, what true potential is, which is outside of here. If you want to call it heaven or Shambhala or Nirvana or whatever, that's fine. But so I'm saying it's an unlimited universe. Well, I, I want to actually ask you more about, yeah, if the earth is flat, how, how is everything structured, you know, outside of the earth? Um, it's interesting. I haven't heard, you know, I'm not an expert in this. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so, I, but I totally agree. In fact, I, I've said if there was no winter, would we appreciate summer? You know, I'm from Michigan, so I go. moved to Miami. And the reason why is because it was cold for five months a year. And so I love the sun every day, but if it wasn't, maybe I would take it for granted. And I have sometimes seeing the sun so much all the time. Right. Um, and I want to ask you more about outside of here, but I have to ask you, cause these questions, I have so many questions, <laughs> you know, the, the sun to me, I, I thought about this theory and then, uh, or to you, it's a, you know, and it's okay. The reality, whatever it may be, mm -hmm. uh, about the flat earth and I'm looking at the sun myself, you know, I'm actually, I'm looking at it one day and I've heard, and maybe you, you have, I'm sure there are different explanations. I don't, I, I would guess, and maybe there's a consensus among certain people with the uh, flat earth, but I'm looking at it and I'm feeling it. And I'm like, that is to me, a real object. I, to me, it, it, it feels like a, I mean, you know, I've heard that maybe it's just a light, you know, the, the flat earth people, they say it's a light, it goes across. Right. And then the moon, of course, we kind of people, you know, they say, it do, you know, obviously it doesn't rotate, but the sun, um, it just feels like a real object. What, 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 what is the sun? What would the sun be? The sun and the moon are both in the flat world. Let me break it down for you real quick. Think of it like a <clears throat> a shallow sports stadium. So the North Pole is at, think of it like a dinner plate covered with a, with a dome, which is the North Pole is in the center of the plate. Antarctica is the only continent that looks unusual. It wraps around the outside like a, like a giant's ice wall. Right. But the, the coastline of Antarctica is not the edge. There is no edge of the world where you can fall off and then there's these weird cosmic waterfalls. It is, it goes, once Antarctica, once you get to the coastline of Antarctica, you literally have to go thousands of miles inland before you find the outer barrier, in which case you're probably going to find some electromagnetic field of some kind. Ah. So it is literally like a Truman Show, like a Hollywood back, back lot, a planetarium, a terrarium, all these things wrapped into one. But the sun and the moon are unique. So the stars above in the sky, no different than a planetarium. You go into a planetarium, you see the stars rotating around, and you can see Mars and Jupiter and comets and that sort of thing. In fact, they can even uh, show waxing and waning crescents of the moon, everything that has to do with the moon. The only thing they can't show in a planetarium is the sun because the sun's too bright, and we don't have that sort of technology to project a really, really bright loom, lumens, you know, high, high lumens, uh, object on a ceiling, you know, nothing like that, S but it's real. They're really no different. So the sun and the moon appear to be either two dimensional or three dimensional objects. Very, very small rotating around the top of this thing, like a mobile above a child's crib. And by, when I say very, very small, I'm saying both of them have to be less than 50 miles wide in diameter which is minuscule compared to what they say. I mean, the moon, not as much. The moon, they only say, even mainstream science says it's only a couple thousand miles wide. So we're shrinking it down 90%. But the sun, we're shrinking that down from 400,000 miles wide down to you know, a, a fraction of a percentage. But they, again, the coincidence that both of them appear to be about the same size because the moon fits perfectly in front of the sun. Even though, and so they say it's a coincidence that the moon is 400 times more narrow than the sun, but it's exactly 400 times farther or closer to the earth than the sun. So that's why it fits perfectly in front of it, which is, you know, just one of the more interesting coincidences. So the sun, it generates its own light source. The moon generates its own light source which means, you know, it's self-luminescent. So it is not reflecting anything from the sun. It is, you want to know why it glows really, really bright at night? It's because it's its own nightlight, basically. And you can check that out. Look up, and I know we don't have a ton of time, but look up 
uh, moon temperature. Flat Earth, look up flat Earth moon temperature, and you'll find sure. out that the moon generates a cold light. And I don't mean that it's colder at night. I mean it generates a refrigerating light. So that acts the exact opposite is the sun. Everyone knows that if you're in the sun, it's 90 degrees in the sun and 80 degrees in the shade. But if you're in the moonlight, right, say it's 50 degrees in the moonlight, it's 60 degrees in the moon shade. And you can test this anytime you want, and it's absolutely a fact. I've done it myself. In fact, I was one of the first people, if not the first, to say, okay, you take a, a magnifying glass to sunlight, you can burn paper. What happens if you take a magnifying glass to moonlight? Does it get warmer? Does it get colder? It even gets colder than normal moonlight. It's absolutely wild. So uh, now, is the sun a transformer to some other? Is it just a light bulb? Yeah, possibly. Is there fusion there? I don't think there's fusion. Uh, you know, if it's generating heat, I think it's generating heat similar to a light bulb where the power is coming from something else. And it is, who knows, it may even be a projection that is giving off heat from the, uh, like when you shine a sun lamp at a mirror. You know, they're still getting a little bit of heat off that mirror. So that's why I think it is. Yeah, it's really hard to say. Yeah. Um, I, I I just know that, you know, it brings me to a lot of thought. When you really think about the depth of the misunderstanding at best, deception at worst, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, so what's going on then like with Mars and the pictures of Mars and then like, people finding faces on Mars and then you have and this this is interesting we we there's a document on cia.gov that was declassified remote viewing civilizations on Mars a million years ago mm -hmm. well under the flat earth situation we could see why they might leak that document now because they really want to sell this Mars thing that Mars is real but i mean there's so much i mean there there's so much and i definitely think uh, the government, unfortunately, you know, you look at Rumsfeld said we're missing $2 trillion the day before 9-11. The Pentagon right. doesn't know where it is. You right. look at a lot of things and it's like, hey, you know, some people might really want to keep something secret. But, I mean, we have uh, – Mars would have to be – I mean, let me ask you this. Yeah. It is – so first of all, like what's going on maybe with Mars and things like that? The second question is, in terms of what David Icke is talking about, right? When, that basically we're a projection from Saturn, um, and that uh, you know, is there is it possible that our that we're in a planetarium, an electromagnetic, sure, whatever, pris, uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> let's say a playground, maybe at best, hopefully, right? Yeah. In the matrix, and then there are actually planets outside of that. I mean, what? So, what's going on with Mars? And all the things they have to hide, and then what do you think of what David Icke okay. has said? Mm -hmm. I'll I'll make it easy for you when it comes to if you're asking any specific questions about Mars or Saturn, Saturn or Jupiter. The easy easy part is because it's way worse than than you think. Ah. Meaning, I'm not just saying that the Apollo program was faked by the Americans. I'm saying the only reason NASA and every space agency was created, and I'm not saying that every 99% of the people in these agencies do not know. The only people sure. that, that 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 really need to be involved at the high level are the telemetry guys that are broadcasting the data, just the raw data from wherever. I'm saying that every story you ever see in the news, ever about you know the face on Mars, the hexagon on Saturn, oh, we're gonna reclassify Pluto, and so on and so on and so on. Oh, a, com a comet ran into Jupiter. They, they don't care if you read the article. All they care is if you pay attention to the title because there's a underlying subtext under all these stories, which is you live on a globe. That's all it is. So it's like, oh yeah, face on Mars. You're thinking about this because you're on a globe. Oh, a comet hit Jupiter. That's going to reinforce the globe. Hexagon on Saturn, same thing. Every space story, every probe they send out, every person they say has been into space, everything is only to satisfy one goal, which is to reinforce the globe so you never think about anything else other than the globe. That's the last thing they want to do is let you or get you to start questioning where you are because the whole point of the globe the idea was to hide the fence. That's it. Meaning when you build a planetarium like this, human beings have a unique capacity to resist confinement. 
meaning, you know, again, you, I've used this before. You could put a buffalo in a thousand acre wildlife preserve, right? With a fence. And as long as they have water and grass and trees and nice things to sleep under, they don't care. They could care. If, I'm comfortable. I don't care about the fence. You put five people in, in that same wildlife preserve, all they're going to care about is the fence. That's all people want to know. It's like, okay, who made the fence? Why am I inside it? Who's on the outside of it? Have I angered whoever? Should I should I be appeasing whoever built this fence? Maybe we should sacrifice things to the fence. And you can see where it goes from there. It just, that is the, our unique nature. And so, because people will say, well, why? Why would they bother hiding? Because of what I just said. Multiply that times everything when it comes to what we've accomplished. You can't be the highest authority in this world unless you're the highest authority. Same thing why, why the Air Force doesn't ever talk about spaceships, because the spaceships are better than the Air Force. The last thing you want to do as a government, as a ruling government, is to tell the people, yeah, we want to rule you. I know there's a bigger power than us that actually built this place, and there's little signs of it everywhere, but you just haven't seen it, but we still want to rule you. There's a brand new religion would pop up overnight. You know, cities would move congregations would relocate for once they found out about this because yes it does does it say that that uh, the divine built it you know that's the handprint of god no not necessarily but it's one step closer to it and it's certainly a, a huge jump from the powers that be that rule us and what the ultimate power is outside well yeah, there, there are definitely, there's so much more going on. So oh, yeah. it, it, whatever anybody's position on this is, the fact is, you know, most of us haven't been to space. Um, no. And so, and the government is not, they, they basically have created a situation where everybody laughs it off. Um, I like at the beginning of your book, which is Flat Earth Clues, The Sky's the Limit, of course, on Amazon. People can buy it there. I recommend they do, actually. I never thought, I never thought I'd say that, but you know what? What I mean, it's nothing to do with you. It's just such a, and any time things are built in that you're just naturally supposed to laugh at it, you probably should maybe look into it a little bit, probably. You know, I mean, don't, and then you start, yeah, go yeah, ahead. Don't take anything at face value. Don't believe sure. anything you say. Look, there, there's an old story, um, uh, well, actually, it's not even a story. Let me let me use the George Carlin quote, which is because there's very few rules I can actually say you should follow in this world. But one is don't believe anything, anything that the government tells you, because there is the, because we've li we lie, especially the Americans. We lie, do not That's trust, right. do not trust the Americans. We lie about everything, every war we've ever fought, every land conquest, every back deal, every treaty, which by the way, I should throw in there real quick, which is the only treaty in the history of the world that's ever been ironclad is one you've never, ever heard of, which is the Antarctic Treaty, which was established in 1958, ratified by every nation that was an economic power, which said, you are not allowed to, to do business in Antarctica, ever, forever, the end. And by that, I mean, this thing isn't even up for review, you know, just verbiage review until 2040. And so if you're, you, you all of a sudden decide to found a country tomorrow, they will put this piece of paper in front of you. They says, oh yeah, by the way, none of your corporations can go down there. And you'll say, oh really? For how long? They go, ever, never, never going to happen. No and one's ever going What's the reason down. they get behind that? They don't. They, they initially, now they can, they can cover it behind uh, environmental reasons. But you got to remember, Greenpeace wasn't even founded until 1972. And that was just, you know, some guys with some tie-dye shirts and a raft. Right. So what, would, what, what happened in 1959? Environmentalism wasn't even a word back then. They just, they just put it out there. They didn't even give the reasons. They said for scientific purposes. Didn't say what, what exactly we're talking about here. And, and it's not like we were stepping on anything back then. You know, there's no indigenous plant life, no animal life, unless you count the penguins and the coastline, and I don't. And most of it is, is above 14,000 feet altitude. It's, it's a unique continent. And so why, and there's today, even now, I suppose there's only like 5,000 guys down there and they're all military and military science. So what, what are they protecting? They don't, they will not say. In fact, here's the part, the, one of the things that really caught my eye was when they were building the treaty, when it, once it was put in place, not only, let's say I'm the head, you know, as we all know, greed and money and power rule the world, right? That's right. Let's, let's say you're the head of Exxon Mobil. You've got 
gobs of liquid cash. If you want to come into my backyard tomorrow and start fracking, you could probably make that happen. Right? It's it, we're, they're trying to get into national parks and they're doing it. You know, they're they're encroaching anywhere they can. But these same people cannot even set foot on Antarctica. And not only that, but they're not even allowed to talk about it. That's the part that threw me. It's like, okay, it's one thing if you try to put a treaty in place and keep the corporations out. But who's to say that you don't go to your buddy at the New York Times and say, I want to run a full page ad every month saying how great it would be for my company to start drilling down in Antarctica. You're not even allowed to do that. No country f f has ever protested this thing. China hasn't protested England and, and Russia they were to or the Soviet Union back then they were trying to rebuild from World War II they weren't allowed to protest from this so how does that work how do you that's when you look and you say okay I and I know I'm connecting some dots here but what conspiracy sure. is bigger than money there's only two of them out there that I know of one is the shape of the world and two is what happens when you die and you know two two th secrets that are so large that potentially they could unhinge the entire civilization as we know it Oh, I'm sorry, to answer your, your David Icke question, um, it's not that David Icke did any bad research or anything like that. It was the foundation, like science, the foundation on which he based his work was flawed from, from the beginning. Because some people have said, oh, you know, you're not smarter than Stephen Hawking or Albert Einstein or all these other guys. I'm going, no, I'm not. But it doesn't really matter because Hawking's work and Einstein's work and, and Oppenheimer's work, everybody's work up until now was based on the same foundation including all the major physical sciences, which is you live on a globe. Imagine what happens to academia tomorrow if all of a sudden you find out you're not on a globe. Think of, think of the, the chaos that could, would happen in every university. Astrophysics and astronomy, those departments shut down forever. They, they don't reopen their doors and all the remaining sciences, all the physical sciences, geology, hydrology, biology, archaeology, take your pick, anything with an ology next to it. Those textbooks have to be gutted. I thank God we can do it digitally now and rebuilt with the with a new model. It, there is because the, one of the questions and I know I'm jumping around here a little bit. Sure, one of the no questions problem. is why? Why? One in every 10 questions I get is why would you bother hiding it? I'm going. You mean aside from academia being completely turned on its ear? Oh, I don't know. How about economics? The fact that our, our economic uh, paradigm right now is so fragile that even if a, a single country gets overthrown, you know, the stock market goes into turmoil, you would have to shut down all the world markets for a month if, if this got out. And then last but not least, the, the spiritual angle of it, which is... You've got the, the major five religions of the world, and by that I mean you know Hinduism, Buddhism, Judaism, Islam, and Christianity, which make up most of the population. Uh, those, all those groups have been looking for some sort of proof of intelligent design, the handprint of God, the Holy Grail, the Ark of the Covenant, that sort of stuff. You're basically giving it to them, all of them, at the same time. Do you think that, that science is going gonna, is gonna to take that sitting down? Oh, no, no, no. They would, it, that is an easy meeting to be in back, you know, 50, 60 years ago. You know, the, the X-Files smoking man meeting where everyone's sitting around the table. It's like, well, what's the worst that could happen? And then you list off some of that stuff I just did. That meeting's 10 minutes long where they just sit and they, they go, yeah, we're, we're not doing this. It's just not going to happen. We're going to keep, keep this secret as long as we can. Well, yeah, along the lines of academia, you know, I, there's a great guy, Nassim Harriman, and, uh, you know, he's a physicist and he's been published, but he's also, other physicists aren't happy with his work. So he's published in mainstream scientific journals, but people are complaining and apparently he's proven some things that Einstein couldn't prove and about, uh, you know, all the information of the universe is within one, one photon in, in, inside of our body that you know and that it's a fractal it's a fractal so it's within itself you know as you as you go like one of those images that yep. it never ends yep. and uh you know his model of the the planets um is actually almost like a the planets following along as the sun is speeding through space but my question is like are all of these people are they it's probably a mixture, I would guess. Are they lying or are they ignorant? Yeah, misinformed? they don't. They don't know. In fact, this is one of the few secrets, very few secrets, where less is more. 
So like the Manhattan Project, when we were working on atomic weapons, hundreds of thousands of people scattered throughout the United States. Lots of people knew, but it was compartmentalized well enough to where nobody really knew exactly what was going on. I mean, they, they had some ideas, of course, but those sort of physics weren't common knowledge back then. So, but with this, you really don't want a lot of people knowing. You do not want uh, uh, anyone. I mean, even because you want people, you want the people that are, especially in front of the cameras, you you want them acting naturally. So I've kidded like Neil deGrasse Tyson, you know, the face of science right now. And to a lesser degree, uh, Bill Nye, the science guy, which I, yeah. is ridiculous to me. Those guys don't know, especially Bill Nye. He doesn't know anything. But Neil deGrasse Tyson, you don't want to tell him because of the weight you don't want on his shoulders. An uh, example of that would be the Apollo astronauts. The Apollo program, I believe they knew. All of them knew. It was it was exactly what you thought was going to happen. Capricorn One style. You, you make these heroes up. You go through the training program. And at the last minute, you say... Okay, here's the deal. You're not getting on any rockets. Here's why. And that was such a jarring punch to the gut for these guys because, and, you know, because then, you know, you've got to push them through all the entire, the rest of the process and they got to go through all the song and dance, you know, ticker tape parades and speeches and uh, ribbon ceremonies and all this stuff. And they, it, it weighs on you. The guilt would weigh on you. So after that, they decide, okay, we're just not going to, we're going to have them sign. It's all going to be Air Force employees anyway at this point. So we're going to make them sign disclosure agreements saying you don't even have the right to ask us why you're faking all, all these little things. Uh, yeah, the astronauts know the 500 people that have claimed to have gone to space. They know that they're faking something but they don't know the magnitude of it. They may suspect, but until you know, you can sleep pretty easy. You know, until somebody puts a folder in front of your face and does a debriefing with you, you don't know. But the Apollo astronauts, they all crawled into bottles, became recluses. I mean, look at Neil Armstrong's speech back in the Clinton era, that weird cryptic message where he said right. that there's so much work to be done. He was talking to, you know, up and coming space people that, uh, that you have to accomplish, but you have to get rid of one of truth's hidden protective layers what who the heck was he talking to you know he was you could tell and this is a guy who did not do press conferences he was he was he, he died shortly after that where he just wanted to get this out and and you know try to clear his conscience the best he could well regarding academia there's so many places that we can go i mean regarding academia though i mean some really 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 smart people mm -hmm. the math is what i want to know because so even Einstein, then you have like Nassim Harriman, who, you know, I mean, the equations he's worked out, uh, you know, this guy in particular, because he's willing to, like, it, it would mean, I, it's just hard for, I've seen him in person. I mean, I've stood within 10 feet of him. It doesn't seem to me like he's trying to pull one over. Now, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, all of us, oh, no. including, but, but my question is, uh, you know, the math, how do, how, when the math is working out, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, in terms of the world being round or part of a planetary system, and then, you know, the universes and, and, uh, you know, so, excuse me, the galaxies, right? And then, right. you know, part of, and yeah, multiple universes. Of course, there was a Princeton professor that, I guess, proved multiverses in the 50s. Sure. That it could be alternate reality. All of these things, I assume some of them are compatible with the flat earth thing, but there'd be, there'd be, there'd have to be a lot of math that seems precise now that is just wrong. Is that yeah, right? you would, you would have to throw out a lot of math. That is true. And again, not to criticize the guys that were doing the math because it still comes down to the foundation. Uh, Tesla was a, was a great, had a right. great quote on this where he said that, look, the problem with science is that nobody bothers to check below the the, the the even the layer they're standing on it's a very very fragile house meaning everyone just builds equations on top of equations on top of equations on top of equations to where he goes really once you start getting out past a certain level they're meaningless they're utter meaningless because no one's bothering bothering to recheck they consider the the base the core foundations to be gospel Therefore, they will make their equations work. I was like, yeah, I, I, I get that. But And by the way, uh, all the other 
conspiracies when it comes to you know the the space stuff a lot of them do dovetail in pretty well as you know as long as you retool them for a, a flat model like ufos aliens that's easy enough to do you know you just make so they're not coming from other planets like venus or mars or mercury or whatever they're just coming from other realms or different dimensions Inter interdimensionally and and multiverses and and those that sort of thing that's pretty easy the only things that the fact i've only found one person that even had a conspiracy and you'll probably know who this is uh, richard hoagland which was he talked about how there were millions of people already living on the moon and secret space program and hundreds of thousands of people living on mars right that model cannot coexist with the flat earth because the moon is just a tiny light in the sky and there's no reason for anyone to live on it it's just you might as well be living on the ceiling of a planetarium it doesn't make sense everything else though works out pretty well including hollow earth by the way you know because sure hollow, hollow earth you don't need much of a cavern people forget that our entire civilization 95 percent of our civilization lives between sea level and one mile that's a very very narrow band so if you carved out a ceiling that was i don't know a couple hundred miles high remember jet plane or commercial air traffic caps out at about 10 miles spy planes at about 20 miles you make a ceiling 20, 200 miles high that's not very high who's to say we aren't in a hollow earth scenario right now i'm saying that this this place is very the illusion that you're on a globe was perpetrated not just it wasn't like mankind came up with the idea it was the creators of this place mankind just facilitated it they just helped it along a man we did not just be very very clear here we did not build this place all we did was help keep it a secret and even then we've only been keeping it a secret f for the last 60 years because we couldn't prove it until the mid 1950s that's the brilliance of this place where remember if our if our history goes back 5,000 years unbroken give or take 4,500 years of that we thought it was pretty much flat and then we started interesting introducing the globe but we had no way of proving it which I think was very very interesting you're pushing forward a model the globe model for 2025 generations and you literally cannot prove it until 50 60 years ago meaning sooner or later you have to get a vehicle up high enough to take a picture of the earth and say oh yeah this is a globe but you can't just start handing out pictures you have to create a fake space program just to give just so you can answer that follow-up question which is oh hey how'd you take the picture and then once you got up high enough to, to to you know to to look down and said oh crap it's not a globe which they they knew then you had to keep it a secret but sorry let me backtrack for a second there let's say uh, I'll, I'll make it easy for you guys let's say you're the king of france in 1500 and you have an actual map of the world you know a flat map to show you what it looks like so what what are you going to do with it you, you don't have the technology to exploit this in any way shape or form you've got uh, wooden ships and horses you've got nothing until the internal combustion engine came out and that's exactly what they did and once that engine was was invented and those first rickety planes uh, happened that's when you know aircraft have re really took a ramp up as opposed to cars cars took a slow time evolving whereas aircraft they try to get those things up to speed as quickly as possible because they were looking for it and even after they got the planes up and running and got their best pilots on it notably uh, admiral bird back in 19 right. he started looking in 1928 it still took him 30 years before they figured it out so this thing was very very well hidden and of course he went to antarctica and, and found some some strange things well, down there and had yeah, the press yeah, conference yeah yeah he he yeah the press conference which he did in 1954 and again this is none of this stuff July, that i'm right? that i that i'm telling you guys is secret information That's it's right. not like well, you can look this up any day you want all i did was take public information and connect the dots admiral bird goes on television in 1954 on a show called the long jeans chronoscope which is l-o-n-g-i-n-e-s chronoscope which is i think a watch manufacturer and 60 minutes of its day and he comes on and says look antarctica this is 1954 and says he still hadn't found it in 1954 he goes this place is made out of money he goes, there, he goes there's oil an entire mountain range made out of coal there's uranium there's anything you could want is down there he, he goes in fact we may be fighting over this thing we're going to be there forever and there's countries right now that are in dispute over the land 
And then he goes down in uh, for the very next mission in 1955, which happened to be his last mission. Operation, after World War II, right? After World War II. Well, at the big mission that he went on after High World Jump? War II uh, was Operation High Jump, and that was in 1946. Okay. Where uh, that's a whole nother thing. Where supposedly right. the because the him. only people that were down there, well, Antarctica is such a strange place. The right. only pe- the only country that was down there during World War II, Germany, w- right? Was Nazi Germany. Everybody yeah. else was was off the ice. They were fighting the war. So the rumor was is that they the Nazis were still down there once they lost Europe, and they had to get rooted out. But we don't know what happened. But what we do know is by the time 1954 rolls around, Bird didn't seem to care. Whatever they they had taken care of that years earlier, and we we don't know the the details. But once he does Operation Deep Freeze, 1955, 1956, that's when he found it. That's when he found what I believe was the outer marker. The the wall. What the, the, well, that's just it. There's no there's no record of it. Only that he goes to, he does Operation Deep Freeze, and then the second he gets back from that, they start do writing up the Antarctic Treaty, and then he dies in his home from a heart attack uh, yeah. within eight months after that, quietly. And I think it was because they didn't want him doing press conferences anymore because he was going to let it slip. Right. And then the Antarctic Treaty is put into place. And, and the same year that the Antarctic Treaty was put in place, 1959, was also the same year the Van Allen radiation belts were announced by NASA, which was, there's so much to this timeline. So you seal off, and the, one of the reasons why I jumped on this thing and it resonated with me so much is that these are moves I would have made. I love empathizing with different groups. And in this case, it's like, okay, what would I do to hide the world? It's like, okay, I'd seal off the outer edge, which is what they did with the Antarctic Treaty, and I'd seal off the upper edge, which is what they did with the formation of NASA in 1958 and the Van Allen radiation belts in 1959, where they said, okay, we've militarized space, but if that's not enough for you, there's a super deadly radiation belt up there that'll kill you, and so nobody should go up there, ever. And Not that anyone could anyway. We didn't have flying cars. We still don't. And that's how they they sealed it off. And then they just held on to it as tightly as they could for the last 50, 60 years. And it's worked well. But between the high-speed internet and social media and high-definition camera technology, it's all started to unravel in the last two years to where now this 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 topic and this idea has been trending very, very quickly. And uh, it's exciting to be a part of it. Well, yeah, it's an honor to have you because, um, again, uh, it's one of those things I thought was crazy, but there there are a lot of unanswered questions that could be solved very quickly. You know, NASA does have explanations for uh, the, the the images being you know thrown together. First of all, I didn't even know that was happening, and I guarantee. 90 something percent of the population has no ideas that has no idea that those images of the earth are not actually uh themselves that oh, oh my god together. let me yeah let me tell an old story about that this is sure. way before i got into flat earth i was running a tech support team in boulder colorado and i wanted to put iconic images on all everybody's desktop so i thought okay i'll just put different images of the earth from space and i go into google and type in the earth from space And literally, and this is back in 2000, 2001, I literally, there was no, there was one image, literally just one image that came up on the screen. There weren't even composites. You remember, nobody was good in Photoshop back then. And it just, uh, I mean, there was a few people who were good, but it was just rows and rows and rows of one image, which was the Apollo 17 blue marble shot, which shows the bottom part of Africa and all of Antarctica and a heavy, heavy cloud cover. You can notice it uh, by a heavy crescent uh, cloud formation. We all have seen it. And that was the shot they put in textbooks forever. It's the most have widely reproduced picture in history. And then Apple, when they decided to do their first iPhone back in what, 2004, they want to do the same thing. They want to put a, a globe on the, why wouldn't they, right? A globe that was going to be their standard background. And they didn't want to use the Apollo 17 shot. And since there were no other images of the earth from space, they had to hire a NASA consultant and literally create a brand new one, which is now called the the Apple iPhone blue marble shot. It was a guy named Scott Simmons and he was interviewed. He said, oh yeah, he was really proud of it. The work that he did, even though he used the cloning tool way too much in the, in the Southern hemisphere and got lazy. And 
But the point was is that NASA didn't even claim to have taken a second snapshot from 1972 up until two years ago, the summer of 2015, after we started asking for this. It's like, why is there only one picture of the Earth from space in 43 years? That's not possible. Statistically speaking, all those probes you sent, all those satellites that are up there, you got Hubble, you got a space shuttle program. Nobody's taken a picture of the Earth from space in two generations. How is that? How does that happen? To where, and that's when you go online and you look, you know, Earth from space, most of the images you will see are composites that are either created by NASA or more often by other people because they were desperate to, to make their own images and they didn't like what NASA was putting out there. And finally, in the summer of 2015, NASA created, uh, you said, oh yeah, by the way, there's this satellite a million miles away, conveniently a nice round number a million miles away. Here, they took this shot. It was mostly cloud cover and it was a piece of crap. And then they said, oh yeah, the, this other satellite, here's some, here's some frames. They shot, they gave us like 20 frames. You know, they, they called it video. I'm going, that's with the moon transiting in front. I, really? Really? That's, that's what you got? And so, yeah, they, when you lean on the space program, and my challenge, anybody out there is listening. Again, you're probably thinking he's an idiot. I'm going to write in and, and give this guy a piece of my People mind. People complain no matter what. You, oh, you of can course. say whatever you want. They're going to bitch. They so, do. But we love them. I've done that before. Listen, I've bitched a lot. So I, <laughs> I it, understand. I understand. It, Go ahead. But I'm saying that, that when you l try to lean on one of the space programs, you're going to come up short. Meaning... There are there are very, very few pictures of the Earth they even claim from space. Find me a full motion video of the Earth from space in HD that is showing the Earth rotating on its axis and the weather morphing. You can either get one or you can get the other, which is you can you can show one with the Earth rotating on its axis and you can, I'm sorry, axis, and you can get one where the weather's morphing, but it's not rotating. I don't know why you can't do both. Um, there's no footage of any astronaut when he when he's outside of a space capsule i don't care if it's the moon or mercury or gemini or any of these when he's outside of a space capsule taking a 360 degree 180 just turn around you know turn around with the camera no one's ever done it in the history of space even by accident that is impossible they haven't done it because there's a fourth wall scenario it's shot on a stu in a studio somewhere and they can't turn around even with the 3D uh, uh, reality-based technology they have now, they cannot do it. They won't risk it because now with all the HD monitors and everything, people can, they'll, they'll dissect it. They'll put it under the microscope. All these things you think that are out there. In fact, there's, there's, no, there's no footage of any camera leaving the rocket pad with the camera running, unedited, going out out into space out, out out of earth orbit nor is there any footage of anything coming back in to earth orbit from from space all these things should be there and the reason why you think that they exist is because of science fiction because we filled in the gaps with all the huge amounts of science fiction that we've watched over the years. Star Wars and Star Trek and all the pseudo-science movies and all those movies in the near future. 2001 A Space Odyssey, Aliens Trilogy and, and beyond. You take your pick. We filled in all these missing gaps with images that we've seen on television and in the theater. And up until now, it, nobody really paid much attention to it. But today so, they are. You're right. I mean, in terms of the, the reason why it's a legitimate discussion to have is because there are a tremendous amount of questions. Of course, right. everything, what I meant earlier is that, you know, it's good for people to question everything actually. And, and, you know, a lot of times they just throw out insults, but a lot of times they throw out compliments. The thing is it's to be able to talk about something is okay to have right. discussion so that it doesn't have to be like uh, it doesn't have to be a, a firefight with every discussion and just saying, "Hey, this is crazy. Screw you. F the, you. You're the, stupid." Me, yeah. And I, I I know we don't have a lot of time, but let me let me run by real quick why people might get upset about this because you're listening. If you're listening to this right now, you're gonna have an opinion. Love it or hate it, flat Earth cannot be ignored because it's so polarizing, because it goes back all the way to your childhood. A globe was put in your classroom when you were six years old and it stayed there until you got through high school and even beyond. When someone comes to you nowadays and says, oh yeah, by the way, that globe was never real. It's the equivalent of right. somebody walking up to you and saying, you're adopted. <laughs> because the ripples from that 
all of a sudden go all the way back into your memory. You, if somebody says, by the way, you're adopted, of course, your first reaction is going to be, no, of course I'm not adopted. That's a bunch of crap, which is very similar to what you say about Flat Earth. And the reason is, is because the memories of your childhood, childhood. go all the way back. The, the, you, if, when you, someone says you're adopted, you question every conversation that you've ever had <laughs> since right. you were six years old. You're, you're trying to find the flaws. If I say that it's not a globe, you go, the ripples follow all the way back to where you're just, you're, you might as well be six years old sitting in that classroom, you know, twirling that globe in your hand. And you, and people, you didn't even think for a second because children don't believe in lies. Uh, if, a, if a teacher, why would a teacher ever lie to you? Hey, this is where you live. Spin the globe. Hey, find your, find your house, find your state on here. It is amazing what, what subtle reinforcements will do. And it's not your fault. And I'm trying right. to, because people, people are going to get angry about this, going, look, this is not your fault. You you didn't have a chance. You were born into this. This was something we've been preaching for 20, 25 generations. It's not just your father and your father's father and your great, great grandparents and, and going into a family tree, which gets so blurred. You have no idea how far back it goes. This is so old. By the time it got to you, you had no way of defending yourself. And so, but so it's not your fault. It, it, but if you look at all the near death experience studies now, I mean, there are, you know, they've studied thousands of people with near death experiences and they, they, they're dead and they can see everything that's happening to them. Right. Which means we're not, if those are correct, and I happen to think they are based on personal you know, experience, not necessarily a near death experience, but a lot of things I've talked about in other episodes, but they're, they're, uh, we're not just our bodies. Um, I, I have, for me, that's a 100% thing based on a lot of things. Um, and so it's, it's very similar because it opens the door to, well, what are we? And then what is this place? And again, the government could solve these, these questions so easily if they wanted to. I mean, the problem is we have to start asking these questions because they exist. Right. The questions exist. I mean, all of these questions, whether somebody agrees the earth is flat or not, um, and people have explanations for these questions, but a lot of these are really uh, legitimate questions. Right. Yeah, don't, again, don't believe what I'm telling you as right. the find truth. your own truth, find your own truth. I will not be, look this, this, this topic is way too deep for me to try to convince you in an hour yeah, or two or two hours. So most people take days. Other people took, take weeks. It took me months because I had, well, I had less material to work with, but I literally sat on this thing for months before finally I just gave up. You know, I tried, I pulled on threads and I pulled on threads before finally I just said, you know what? I can't prove the globe anymore. It sounds insane, but I couldn't do it. So I just put a series of videos out there called Flat Earth Clues. And I said, okay, internet hive mind, prove me wrong. Tell me where I screwed up in this. And you think, okay, well, why didn't you listen to the people? You must've gotten shot down. No, I didn't get shot down. People kept writing me. People kept calling me saying, there, what, there's, there's more to this. Subject matter, matter experts started getting a hold of me saying, you might be onto something. And nobody called me up and said, you hear, you're absolutely wrong. Here's why well, you think that somebody would have, if I was right. dead wrong, why that's hasn't anybody, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, well, that's exactly it. it yeah. You know, nobody, the reason why I'm so excited to talk to you because, and you know, people, uh, Neil, Neil, De, I don't know, Neil, Neil Tyson, deGrasse Tyson. Yeah. yeah. He, he, he talks about in the Southern hemisphere that the, uh, you know, you look at one of the stars and it shifted or something. And, and um, you know, and then the, I'm sure there's a counter to that, to whatever he's saying. The point yeah. is the government, I, there's a lot of great people in the government. It is compartmentalized. Academics, the same thing. If you want to control everything, you control it at the top. It's very clear that that's true. Right. It's very, very clear. And the fact is that we're not getting all the information about history, about the, the universe, about life. There's a lot more about medicine, about money, um, with true motivations. And I want to send forgiveness and love to those people, even if they're trying to screw us over or we're some experiment or something else. But there are so many legitimate questions that uh, th they can sit there and say people are crazy to talk about the flat earth. Well, answer the questions 
and they'll say, well, we don't have to. It's so crazy we don't have to answer it. They tried to do that with aliens, and now Obama went on Jimmy Kimmel, and he said uh, jokingly, but he said, and it, to me, it didn't look like maybe he was joking so much. He said, well, they don't want us to know that they're there, something to that effect, that they don't, they don't want to be discovered. So no. therefore, you yeah, know. you don't. I mean, part of the reason why it has been hidden is because you don't want you. The big key here, and I've I've seen this through all the research I've done, is whoever built this place wants us acting naturally. They don't want to be. We, we don't want. They don't want us acting like we've got some heavy-handed person looking over our shoulder. They want to see what we do on our own, which makes sense. It answers one of the the alien questions. Why isn't an alien ship ever landed in Main Street, USA? Gone out, taking pictures, shook a few hands, signed some autographs, and take off. Because it would it would influence the core of the society so deeply that they may not be able to recover. You know, you want to pick up somebody in a forest or a boat? Oh yeah, you can totally do that. But you're but you're absolutely right. Let me let me let me do, throw one more thing in here. Flat Earth is the open ultimate open minded test. I don't care what conspiracy you're into, and I'm not right. going to rattle them all off, <laughs> but, because there's a lot of them out there. But and which is interesting because this is the only conspiracy where I've seen where cons even conspiracy guys going that thing's a piece of, of crap. Course. I don't want to touch that in a million of years. Of course. So, but if you can you can get your head around this. Once you do, it opens everything else up. Then you don't judge any other conspiracy. You're open-minded to them all. I mean, no, I don't believe that Bigfoot and Elvis had a baby or anything like that. <laughs> but at the same time, I'm not going to completely slam that guy that brings it up. I'm going, you know what? Tell me more. What do you got? I, you know, beforehand, I might laugh him out of the room. But because everybody starts out, everybody in this community starts out hating it. The t-shirt the reads, I became a flat earther because I tried to debunk flat earth. And it's true. Everybody tries to debunk flat earth. If you, if you in your first day say, you know what, flat earth, that's a pretty good idea. I actually think there was something wrong with you. <laughs> so Right, based on all the programming. And, oh, yeah. Um, you know, and we even had a video that was pretty popular about a guy named David Wilcock and Corey Good, and people were attacking them. And my, my whole video was that, well... Uh, meaning people from the UFO community were complaining about these guys and and they were just like, hey, we're trying to, you know, they weren't really attacking back, but they were getting attacked. And it's sort of like, I mean, every, somebody could just say it's all crazy. So why, you know, why do you need to sit there and pick everything apart? I mean, anything anybody could say could be crazy since we're possibly not even quote unquote really here. Sure. I mean, as far as I know, we're uh, we're a frequency, which means that uh, in in some ways this is real, but it just depends on your definition of real. I mean, exactly, could, it's it's real. Could... It's real to us, so I generally don't go down that road because look, as long as we think it's real, that doesn't that doesn't matter so much. But but you're right. I mean, yeah, you could be a frequency. Remember, there's television stations broadcasting around you. All there's there's country That's music right. in the air right around you happening but you can't hear it because you don't have the technology in front of you i mean you you might but you don't have technology to listen to it so who's to say that there aren't other dimensions and one other thing real quick which is if you think it's so unbelievable come on play the odds here out of all the fantastic science fiction stories that we have written over the years right all the twilight zone episodes all the star treks all 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 the outer limits didn't you think that one of them might accidentally be the you know be the one it, it, it's even a even a, uh, a stopped clock is right twice a day so who's to say that we haven't already written this story and it, it's just it's out there well yeah and there's so many places to go i i would love to really find out mark um what do you think is going on in terms of we've talked about other realms and dimensions and also mm -hmm. the creators specifically yep. Because you've done all this research, I think a lot of it brings up some really important questions, which I think, based on the fact the government has been up to some things, they haven't always been honest. Heck, we had slaves. It was legal to have slaves. So, you know, right. the government, we're not perfect, right? So to say they should prove some things that other people could think is silly, I mean, you could go back in time. The, the U.S. Patent Office in 1900, didn't they say apparently that we've invented everything so we're stopping patents. No more patents in 1900. Everything's been invented. So, I mean, you know, and people could say, 
they, they could have said, well, it's silly to think we're going to invent more things. So the government having to address things that other people think are silly, right. I don't really, I, I think they should be proving these things. They should, they should give more emphasis. And I think they're going to have to. It's going to be interesting. Uh, I don't think they're going to be able to hide everything. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be in our lifetime, but you know, going forward, it's, going, it's getting increasingly difficult to hide these things, I, I believe. So, but let me ask you, what do you think, based on all your research, mm -hmm. is going on in terms of you know, the creators of this place? Like when you trace back, because you trace back and you think, okay, the earth is flat, this is BS. Right. Space, you know, there's a ceiling there. Um, yep. You know, what what is your real feeling about what's going on with aliens, other realms, other dimensions, and the creators of of this place? Other dimensions exist. I have no doubt. Uh, as far as other realms go, do I think this is a one-off? No. Nor do I even think that we are unique to this place. Meaning, with something as sophisticated and something that can be added on and expanded on like this place can, that we are definitely not the first people to rent this apartment. <laughs> there are civilizations going back a long, long ways. And right. we all know this. The, the sunken cities off of Japan, the sunken cities off of India. How, what, what, how old are the pyramids of Giza or the Bosnian pyramids, which they haven't even unearthed yet? Sure. We, you know, what version are we? If our civilization only goes back, say, 5,000 years unbroken, but we know there's other civilizations back, you know, the Sumerians, uh, you know, are the Nephilim involved? At one point, the all the continents were a supercontinent that was known as Pangaea, and that, of course, continent works way better on a flat model. What version was, was running on through there? Are we version 7? Are we version 27? We don't know, but how far, who was here before us? You know, what... The That's Atlantis, right. Bimini Road, how far back does it go? Go back to um, Tepe or whatever that, that place. There Turkey. you go. Yeah. I mean, so do I think we're, we're not a one-off, and if you're going to build one of these places, you're going to build more than one of these places. And, and why, why not a whole bunch more? And if that's the case, then how many layers are there? And I don't want to get into a Russian stacking doll argument because that then you'll go crazy eventually. But because <laughs> I do, I try to live one world at a time if I can, and still I'm trying to figure out this one. But it appears that there are more there are more than of these than than just this. And if that's the case, that means that you know what I mean. What happens to the soul? I don't want to speculate too much on you know what happens when we die other than i firmly believe that this place is just a temporary housing a perspective regeneration house more than more than anything where we are here to understand what it feels like to be limited what it feels like to be in perpetual conflict and as far as the creators go i've been fond of saying okay you know there's only two ways you can go with this and that is it is either uh, created by the divine or God subcontracted out the work. One of the two. Either way, it's some advanced form of technology with a civilization that's way beyond what we are. So if some golden egg-like spaceship decided to land somewhere in Africa, uh, who's to say that there wouldn't be religions popping up out of nowhere? Or who's to say that the major religions, religions wouldn't see this civilization as the divine. Yeah, I mean, you're kind of splitting hairs there. I mean, what's the difference between a, a civilization that has technology which is b so far beyond us we would determine it as magic and a uh, divine power that waves its hand and also creates magic? You know, kind of a kind of a toss up. So, but I but I have no doubt that this place was created, which is why this particular theory above all other conspiracy things has resonated so much more quickly and so much more positively because it's a message of hope. And that is every other conspiracy has a re is a really, really dark. I don't, I'm not, again, I'm not going to list them off. You know what they are. They're all dark and brooding and Heath Ledger and Batman Joker type stuff. I mean, you know, every, sure. it's all, it's all dark, dark, dark shades of gray. Whereas this has a real golden age. I'm not saying it's a kumbaya moment, but it has a real golden age feel to it which is uh, uh, you, the music is a perfect example. Find me a happy folk song about JFK. You're not going to be able to find it. But you look up Flat Earth music and Flat Earth songs, we've created 200 original songs in the last couple of years. 
just a, you know and they're all really positive songs I mean, yeah there's one or two dark brooding songs in there i think they're kind of grungy <laughs> but the rest are really really happy how does that happen how why is this the flat earth involved more women than all the other conspiracies because it has this cool message of hope which is yeah you may be in a small you know a much much smaller place compared to it like an infinite universe and infinite and lonely now you're all in one boat and you're all and not only that but you were created deliberately for a reason and everything in here is intimate to you uh, somebody asked me once uh, if you're killing astrology and i say no i'm not killing astrology i go you, you have the lights in the sky the plants and the stars you know a wonderful clock system very fantastic clock system have this great meaning and, and can foretell certain things and, and have an impact on your life great I'm just saying that they aren't millions of light years away. I'm saying they're right there. They're really, really close. And not only that, but it's your astrology system. It's not the rest of the universes. It's made just for you. Flat Earth is a message of hope. That's that's what I've been, you know, my underlying tone that I'm trying to get out there for people. Well, I love what you're saying. I mean, to me, I think that I wouldn't even use the word conspiracy. To me, it's a set of questions that could be answered. Sure. And uh, whether the Earth is flat or not, I don't know, unless somebody goes to space and takes some video like you're talking about and uh, and then we all can do it if we have enough money and they actually let people do that and not just say they're going to let people do that and then don't let them and yeah. all kinds we're, of nonsense that yeah, we're all up to. Absolutely. We're, we, we have been robbed of, of part of our future because of what you just said there. Where uh, The Jetsons is a series from what, the 1960s? That's right. And then they cut we're, it off. Where, where are the Jetsons cars? Where are our flying cars? Where are the cities on stilts? None of these things, we, we have been denied a huge chunk of our future because they were afraid of what might happen. Yeah, we got some cool televisions, but cars really haven't changed. Airplanes really haven't changed. We, nobody's got phasers or anything like that. We've been, we've been stunted in that regards. And that, that I'm a little sad about. Yeah, and I think that personally, I think that's due to money. I think, you know, it's interesting to talk about Dr. Stephen Greer and his, his documentary Unacknowledged and um, that when they're talking about where this money may have gone, these black, black sure. budget programs and that yeah. it probably is for a secret space program. This is what he says. Uh, this is what he's been you know, finding out and maybe maybe that's not true. Maybe it is true. The money is going somewhere. You talk about Area 51, something else is going on. So for me, I don't even know that it's a conspiracy. It's just, it's a fact that there is more going on that the general public is not aware of. Right. And uh, I, I think in terms of the stars, in terms of the planet or what we think the planet is, the, the fact is that there could be there could be a lot of options. It might not just be, globe versus flat earth there could be a lot of things going on all simultaneously and uh, to categorize things and to throw things out and to say people are crazy it's just i think that's really denying us getting to the bottom of things and also to demonize and this is easy for me to do but to demonize the people that just want to dismiss it because almost everything like you said about people that find out about flat earth and Everything that was interesting to me, I thought was crazy initially. Kundalini yoga, ayahuasca. I mean, all the, the, these things, I was like, ah, I don't know. These people, it looks kind of crazy. And then and I find out for me that it's, wow, that, this is pretty amazing. I don't know if, um, if I need to say, oh, I believe the earth is round or flat until I get some proof, until I get some proof. And I don't know that anybody needs to call anybody crazy until there's literally proof that can be done over and over to me that's what science is um and uh and i think the of course scientists will say about the flat earth that it has been proven and it can be done over and over but then let's go ahead and answer all of mark's questions there you go <laughs> well, yeah again if yeah if it if it was so easy then why you know again i part of it isn't science part of it is whoever created this place but Look, you were right. preaching the glo you were preaching the globe without absolute proof for 20, 25 generations. And so if you think for a second and your people are saying, well, you know, why, why would they lie? I'm going, well, because if they were wrong, they had already been preaching it for 400 and something years. You think I mean, science is a foundation. It's an institution like anything else. You don't think they're going to protect their own? Of course they are. 
that science science is no different than a corporation in that regard. So if if somebody came up with a alternative fuel source that would replace oil, you know exactly what the petroleum industry would do. They would bribe them or they would shut them down. And uh, same thing applies to science. They they have to protect their own. And I, I don't blame them in some ways. Well, I think anybody would do it. You're not going to fire yourself. And it's like, oh, yeah, I'd come clean. I'd tell the public, really, would you? Because that means you don't get to go, go to work in the morning. And the university you worked for, they get shut down. And all your friends get shut down. So would you do it? I don't think they would. Well, I agree. It's definitely potatoes. worth I'm looking Patricia into, Steer, Mark. And my guest I mean, goes Mark, by... you have some interesting work. I love it. Flat Earth Clues, The Sky's the Limit is the book. Buy it on Amazon. You don't have to look into it, but you could. You could, and it actually won't kill you if you do. And you might decide it's not for you, but you might decide, hey, why aren't these questions answered? That's that's where I'm at. What What's going on? And uh, let's get some answers, and then we don't have to think about it anymore. But the more that the questions aren't answered, the longer it goes on, the more momentum it's going to get. And, uh, you know, so I applaud the work Mark is doing. He's on YouTube, uh, Mark Sargent. That's. Um, oh, you can just type, just, you don't even have to worry about my name. Just type in Flat Earth Clues into YouTube. Okay. And on yeah. Facebook as well, right? Flat Earth uh, I, is a book. You know, just type it into any search engine. Oh. I try to pro I try to promote the the community if I can. Just do this if you get a chance. Just type in Flat Earth into YouTube and see which and sort by upload date. When you looked in 2015, that number was at 50,000. If you look this morning, it's 19 million. So yeah, tell me where it's going. We're not going <laughs> away anytime soon. No, that's amazing. You, definitely, it's getting momentum. I couldn't escape it. I couldn't escape it. And you know <laughs> what? I mean, I'm thankful because I do want to know the answers to these questions. I want to know what's going on in Antarctica. I want to know. I want to know what's going on in space. Where where these images are? These video. I mean, we spent billions of dollars. And we have one image. I mean, what's going on with that? So you know, let's get some answers. And it's only it's only going to happen if you spread these links. So spread all of Mark's links. And also you can go to www.believe.love. That's our website. And uh, we, help, we help you in so many categories. It's been an honor to have Mark on. Also, uh, youtube.com forward slash believe loves you. And uh, join into the discussion. And thanks so much, Mark, for joining us on Believe. I hope you have a great day or night, wherever you may be. All right. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mark. Yeah.